Hello, hello, YouTubers. This is your Apple Senior Advisor with the first video for my channel, uh, particularly geared towards the older generation. I have been working with Apple over four years um, in Apple Care, and um, a lot of the older people would call in and, and say that you know uh, their grandchildren or their children or their spouse helped them set up certain devices and things like that, and then you know when they weren't around. Um, they ran into a lot of issues and had to call us. And what I've learned is that there is a lot of things that don't necessarily require you to have to call into Apple and wait on hold and hope that you're dealing with someone who knows what they're talking about. So I wanted to do a channel geared specifically to the older generation to kind of have them save time and actually learn how to use the basics on some of the Apple products and that kind of thing. But at the same time, whenever there's a new product that comes out from Apple, I definitely want to talk about it. So it's, this video is also for people who are interested in buying the new AirPods Pro that just came out. Um, the pros and cons, comparing, contrasting against um, the Powerbeats Pro and the second generation AirPods. Uh, hopefully with this video, you will either make a decision to buy a, a pair of AirPods or Powerbeats Pro or not to get in at all. Either way, I just hope that it, you all enjoy the video and can glean some um, insight to these new power, uh, sorry, AirPods Pro that just came out. Okay, so let's get started. So here are the new AirPod Pros. Um, they changed the case, uh, but it's still a wireless charging case. So that's one thing that I just wanna make sure you all know. This is the second generation, this is the first generation, and they did elongate the case a little bit, but I don't wanna jump ahead of myself. I wanna talk about the cord first. Before you make this purchase, just know that uh, Apple is slowly getting us to USB-C. Um, it's weird because the iPad Pro, which I also has, has a USB-C to USB-C, meaning that this connection that you see right here, a little blurry, um, that you see right here um, is actually top, goes into both ends. Well, with the AirPods Pro, it's USB-C to lightning. So you still have the conventional lightning uh, cable that you're used to with all of the modern Apple products um, at this point. Uh, and that's how that goes directly into the AirPods case. But the, the block that actually has the plug that goes into your outlet, the AirPods Pro didn't come with it. So if you don't have um, the new iPhone 11 Pro Max, if you don't have an uh, a, uh, iPad Pro, if you don't have the newer uh, MacBooks that have the USB-C, you're going to have to buy that little brick that actually connects the USB-C cord to the lightning cable, this, and the brick that goes into the outlet. Um, I don't recall how much it is. I, I want to say like $30 or so because Apple tends to make their plugs a little bit more pricier than what I think it should be. Uh, but you definitely need to do that. So in addition to the $249 price tag, you're also coming out of the pocket another $30 or so to get the um, the actual brick uh, to plug into the wall. So just bear in mind when you're making the decision about the purchase. Um, that's really the only issue that you have to worry about as far as that. With me, I'm in California, so of course with the taxes and everything, I paid a probably about two seventy five for it everything. So a very very expensive piece of equipment. And what I will say, um, I might get some bad feedback for this, but I personally feel that Apple overpriced these AirPods Pro. Um, personally. I think that they were a bit overpriced. I think that what they should have done was drop the price to the second generation and made them around like 150, 145 or something, and then made these like 199. Um, I just think they were slightly overpriced. Uh, I, I'm not not that's not the reason I'm not going to take them back to the Apple Store or get a refund or anything or keep keep the uh, the second generation that I have uh, because there are features that outweigh made my celebrity on uh, my power beats pro and um the second generation airpods so i'm going definitely going to keep them uh so with that being said apple changed the size of uh the airpods so complete read i don't want to say a complete redesign but definitely you can tell the size is different and you can tell someone is wearing them now because they're shorter um in your ear so someone can 
glance at you and know that you have the newer ones that came out. Another thing that Apple did is they added the ear tips. Uh, these can come off and a lot of people, it, it seems like it's difficult um, to yank it off, but I don't know how Apple did it, but they really have it where it clicks in place. So therefore, uh, if you, uh, the standard size comes with medium, they also have the smaller ones and a larger one. So you can experiment if you want and put in the pair that, you know, will probably fit your ear. Um, it also has an ear tip test. So when you uh, go to settings on the iPhone and then click on um, the Bluetooth and then the letter I next to the AirPods, the name of them, uh, you'll be in a position where it'll say the ear tip test and basically you'll put both AirPods in your ears. It'll play music and it'll let you know if the size is, is right for your ears or that kind of thing. So I'm gonna just put this back in there. Um, if you can see, it's gonna clip. There we go, oops. All right, there we go. And I mean, once you put it on there, it's really hard for it to come off, FYI. So that's the first impression with that, with the ear tips. Now, this is where I'm a little disappointed. Um, for me, these AirPods are so light that I would forget that they were in my ear. Uh, I would go to sleep with them and wake up and they're still in my ear. I would, uh, there's been a number of times where I took a shower and I had to, I, right before I washed my hair, I was like, oh wait, I have them in my ear. Um, because they're so light, it's easy for me to forget that they're in my ear. These, not so much. I know they're in my ear. Um, and I'm sure that that's, it's a bittersweet, you know, because with the ear tips, you would like to um, have that, you wanna immerse yourself in the sound. So therefore, you know that they're in your ear. So for me, um, I don't I don't keep them in my ear as much as I did on the second generation. I, I just almost always take them out when I'm not using them because I can tell that they're in my ear. And I'm not gonna say they're uncomfortable. I just know they're there and I just, don't like to have them in my ears, uh, you know, a long periods of time. Now, my one of my sister in laws who are very, very into the earth and that kind of thing, who's kind of um, that's my Mac telling me what time it is. Um, that you know, she's uh, she's into the earth and that kind of thing. So her thing is, you know, having Bluetooth devices close to your brain and in your ears for long periods of time is not very safe and a bit harmful. So uh, I personally. <laughs> I keep them in my ear, so I don't really care. But because of me knowing that they're in there, um, I do put them in the case more frequently. So maybe that's a, a, a benefit if it truly is harmful to have them in your ear as much as I had them in my ear. Um, for people who, um, who could not get AirPods, I have another person in the family who could not get the AirPods because they wouldn't fit in her ear. Uh, this is a benefit for people who had issues with the original AirPods fitting in your ear because you have the ear tip now to change everything out. So that's, I guess with Apple doing this, it can open up a new avenue of people who initially did not want to buy the AirPods because now it's it's more of a fit for everybody. Uh, so I think that was a plus on Apple's end. Unfortunately for me, um, I know they're in my ear and then sometimes if I smile a certain way, uh, they get loose and, it's been a couple of times where I had to push them back in because I was afraid they were going to fall out. That's something. That's an experience that I never had with the second generation. But with this one, and I've I've tried this the medium uh, ear tips and the small, and I had the same issue. After this video, I'm going to probably try the large and just see if maybe um, that will fix it, or it might just be something I have to deal with. I don't know. Uh, but I know for me. Uh, that's the only issue that I have. I have to just be very careful um, about them slipping out, especially if I'm laughing or that kind of thing or moving my facial muscles. Uh, they might get a little loose. Not a huge issue, nothing to be afraid of, but definitely um, something that I'm cognizant of when I'm you know, out jumping about or that kind of thing. So just something to bear in mind, um, which I like about this, uh, the Powerbeats Pro because you still have the ear tip that hasn't changed. You still have the ear tip, but it has the clip. So it fits snugly in your ear and it doesn't come out. So for some of you all who might have my problem and you don't want to, um, you want that comfort and, and, and you don't want the fear of it falling out, uh, the Powerbeats Pro might be your best bet. Um, I don't 
like to get too much into sound and that kind of thing. Um, it's Apple, so therefore, uh, the sound on my second gen and the Powerbeats Pro, the Powerbeats Pro did have more of a um, a rich bass type sound. I, I will say the experience was, was a bit more immersive, but with these, I didn't see much of a difference between the two. Um, which is to be expected. I would I would expect that you know if, if Apple is going to put a high price point on their devices, then um, the music should be consistent and it should be a good audio experience. So for me, I didn't sense a huge difference in the, the audio quality or that kind of thing. It still sounds great. I can hear all the intricacies of the instruments and that kind of thing when I'm li listening to different um, genres of music. So um, no complaints whatsoever on the sound. Um, the feature that I really want to get on now is the transparency mode and a noise cancellation mode. And that's what makes these freaking amazing uh, because what it does is I'll discuss transparency mode first. Uh, with transparency mode, you know, when you have like especially these type of devices with ear tips, when you have them in your ear and you're playing music and someone in your environment is talking to you, you tend to talk louder than you normally would because you have something that's impeding the the complete 100% flow of you hearing what's being said. So you talk a little bit louder to compensate for that, um, though that being in your ear, uh, which can be very annoying, especially if you're listening to music. So at transparency mode, what you'll do is you basically just press in, you just press this in um, one time uh, until you hear like a, a chime. It makes like this little bling, or whatever and then it'll switch from noise cancellation to um to transparency mode and what that does is transparency mode allows you to hear your external environment a bit better um i this is my third time trying to do this video and i'm glad because each time each another day that i spend with the airpods i kind of come up with more information that i can share to make it a better decision if you want to buy them or not um what I initially said is that even when you're listening to music and you put it in transparency mode, you can hear your your external environment. That's not necessarily true. If the music is up really, really loud, um, there were times where I tried to trend, I tried to switch between transparency mode and noise cancellation, and there wasn't much a difference um, when the music was at a, a higher than normal volume. When the volume is a little bit lower then i can go into transparency mode and i can hear what's going on i can hear like people walking by or if i'm in a grocery store i can hear what's going on um the, the example that i gave uh to use transparency mode is a situation where if you're like for me when i was in a grocery store on my second generation i would um you know go to the grocery store and listen to my music you know to weed out all the crying kids and, and loud noise and the, the store music they have on the intercom and um, once i get to the register of course, the cashier is asking me, how am I doing? Do I want paper or plastic? All that good stuff. Do I want to buy a bag for 10 cents and everything? And, you know, sometimes I'll tap like on the AirPods, tap to pause. Um, it does, And it doesn't always pause in time. So sometimes I just for sake of being efficient, I'll just take one AirPod out my ear so I can you know, pause the music and see what's going on. Ideally, in a perfect world, if my volume is low enough, I can just go into transparency mode, keep them in my ear talk at a volume where I'm not where it doesn't seem like I'm yelling but I can also hear what she's saying because I'm letting in that external environment into my experience now noise cancellation mode is freaking amazing um when you are in uh, noise cancellation mode it re it totally cancels out your external environment uh to give you an example I can be in my living room right now watching television. I'll put my AirPods Pro in and I'll go into noise cancellation mode and I can faintly hear the television. I can still make out what they're saying, but the volume is drastically reduced. So the moment I play music, I don't hear, I literally cannot hear anything in my external environment, um, which I think is amazing how Apple has done that. Um, one thing, another benefit of the, of the AirPods Pro that I like also is that I don't have to have the volume as loud as I did on these. I, I'm sorry, I know it's probably bad for your hearing, but I just want an immersive experience. So when I'm listening to music, I really wanted to crank the volume up. Um, this has caused my environment to be so good that I don't need to have the volume at full blast. I think for me, a third or halfway at the volume, so maybe like 35 to 50% volume level is all I need. And it's pretty, pretty loud. 
uh, and especially in noise cancellation mode, it's as if you're in your own world. You cannot hear the an external environment. And I just, that feature alone is amazing. Now, to get on something that I wanted to complain about, and that is uh, it's noise cancellation for your external environment, but it's not noise cancellation for the a recipient's environment hearing you as far as if you're talking on the phone and that's been an issue that i've had for quite some time everyone knows the first generation airpods um you can i mean i swear my brother has the first generation and and my nephew can be right by him and it sounds as if my nephew is on the phone like on a three-way call like it's that clear that i can hear what's happening if he's moving pots and pans around washing dishes um, pouring a drink, I can literally hear everything. And after a while, that gets really, really annoying, especially when you have AirPods in your ear because you their background is loud. It's it's in your ear because you're also wearing AirPods. And I find myself wanting to talk louder because I'm thinking they can't hear what I'm saying because of their environment being so loud. So that was an issue I've always had with the first generation AirPods. So I got the second generation thinking, okay, this is let's. Just recognize the elephant in the room. That's one thing that Apple does. They will leave out a feature that I personally think they should have added the first time for the amount that they're charging, but they wait until the next generation to add that feature that should have been on the first generation. So when I got these, I was like, okay, these are a bit more expensive, $199, but it's the second generation. They have the wireless charging on it, and I'm sure they're going to do something about the noise cancellation as far as background noise. Did they do that? They did not. Um, I, was it a slight improvement? A, oof, of slight, slight, slight improvement. Um, but my mother, when she called, she could still hear everything in the background. And that was really, really annoying. So um, they did a slight improvement, but not an improvement enough. Um, so I was a little frustrated because I'm like, wait a minute. So all I paid for was I paid $200 for a few extra features in a wireless case but nothing so significant where it was where i think it was worth me upgrading for my first generation paying the extra premium to get these i don't regret the per purchase because i like wireless charging so i like the case for that purpose so i don't regret the purchase i just feel like they again they 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 charged more but didn't add enough features and i get it apple is about music from the iPod up until Apple Music, up until your your um, Apple Watch where you can work out and listen to your music. So everything about Apple has been this whole thing about music. So I totally get it. Music and podcasts and audiobooks and that kind of thing. Um, this generation, my generation of younger, we don't talk on the phone as much as, in my opinion, I could be wrong, but in my opinion, um, we don't talk on the phone or like to talk on the phone as much as like my older brother and my sister and my mom. Like they, you know, they'll text, but nine times out of 10, they're going to call to chit chat over texting. Whereas for me, my default is text. I'm going to always text anyone first. I expect text messages. You will get a quicker response from me during text because I'm either watching television at a movie, listening to music, cooking or something like that. So texting works for me. And I think with, you know, the other generations, the younger generations that like are on Snapchat and um, and Instagram and, and all that good stuff, you know, we're we're not really talking on the phone like we're we're doing short little videos and clips and stuff uh, where people hearing your background on a phone call isn't really a big deal. So I think I'm I'm thinking that's why Apple didn't put too much emphasis on that because we're going we're kind of going in this world where we're kind of separated and we're not really talking on the phone like we used to um, again that's my observation i could be wrong um maybe there's a lot of younger people that do still talk on the phone a lot i don't know but i just figured that if that was the case apple would have added the noise cancellation as far as when you're on a phone call to this second generation um you know because enough people would have complained about it the power beats pro same thing I, I didn't hear anybody say that, the, that, the, that they could hear the background or that kind of thing. It was no big deal. Um, I think it's it's just like these two. Like they didn't really do anything as far as phone calls and, and that kind of thing. They nailed it on this one. So yes, it took 
it took this third one, the AirPods Pro, it took them to add the Pro at the end of it, and it took them to add an additional $49 to the original price of the second generation to finally uh, do something about the noise cancellation. Um, so kudos to Apple for that. Um, the only issue that I have um, with that is I just still think that that's a feature that should have been added um, a long time ago, but it's what it is. I'm used to it. It's what Apple has always done with all their phones and other devices. So it's just something that just comes with the territory. Um, but to give you an example, I was washing dishes. I was on the phone with my brother. I was washing dishes and I had a buddy that was over and he was on the phone laughing and talking to somebody. And my brother was asking, was my friend there? And I was like, yeah, you don't hear him laughing. And he said, no, I said, yeah, I've been washing the dishes and everything. And he said, I didn't really hear anything at all. Um, and then the ultimate test, because my mother, I don't know if it's genetic, but we have super hypersensitive hearing. We can hear it really, really well. And um, I was asking her, I was right by the TV. I was walking around. I was washing dishes and all kinds of other stuff. And I said, do you hear anything that's happening? She said, I don't hear anything. So she passed uh, the AirPods Pro passed my mom test. Uh, so uh, she complained a little bit today because I was in the grocery store. But that's that's going to happen if someone's near you making a loud, unexpected noise, you know, they're going to hear that. But as far as it being super sensitive um, where you can hear everything, um, Apple has made a significant improvement on that on these. So that's pretty much what I want to share with you about the AirPods Pro. I don't really want to get into the how to's as far as like, you know, if you want to play if you want to pause your music, you tap it once. If you want to fast forward, I believe to the next track, I believe it's you tap twice. And if you want to fast forward to the, uh, if you want to go backwards, you do it three times. Um, I might have that wrong. I know if you, you click once, it will pause it. And I want to say two times it goes forward and three times it goes back. But that's something that you will figure out once you actually get them and unbox them and use them for yourself. So those features are still there. You can change it where you can press and hold for the chime and activate Siri, or you can do it to just do the noise um, portion for noise cancellation um, and transparency mode, or you can do it on each. So maybe on the left AirPods, you can do Siri on the right where you can do the noise cancellation transparency feature. So you do have that also, which you would go into settings on the iPhone um, settings and then Bluetooth, the letter I, and then you'll see those options available to you. Uh, so I just want to make sure I got that out the way. Um, Apple added the. This is just more. This is just me rambling at this point. But Apple has also in the new iOS update uh, had a share feature. So if I'm listening to my on my AirPods on my iPhone and I want to share um, what I'm watching or listening to with someone next to me, I can take my iPhone, put it next to their AirPods, and share the audio. And then instead of them, you know, putting me putting my earpod in their ear, which some would say is disgusting. They, if they have their own earpods, they, we can both hear the same thing at one time. So I think that was a great feature that was added as well. Um, so I think that's it. So just to reiterate, uh, on my recommendations for the AirPods pro, this is how I, how I look at it. Um, if you can fit your AirPods, if, if these can fit in your ear, if you have the first generation or you've worn them or something like that, if you can fit them in your ear with no problem, I would just say save the money and get the second generation. If you do not talk on the phone that much um, and you just primarily listen to music or workout or that kind of thing, save the $50 or whatever and just get the, um, the, the second generation. It's no big deal. Um, if you... Uh, prefer beats and you like to work out and you really are concerned about things falling out your ear, go ahead and get the Power Beats Pro. Um, the Power Beats Pro, by the way, does not have wireless charging. So you do have to connect it to the lightning cable uh, to make that, to keep that charged. Whereas this has the option of both wireless and um, lightning charging. So um, that's also something to think about. And then if you uh, had had an issue with the AirPods fitting in your ears and that's why you didn't buy them, get the AirPods Pro. If you talk on the phone a lot to your loving mom or your spouse or that kind of thing, if you do a lot of phone conversations and people complained about hearing your background or it being too sensitive, go ahead and pay the, pay the money for the AirPods Pro. Out of the love for my family who still want to talk on the phone, I foot the bill for these um, because I, I know how annoying it can be to hear someone's background because I 
talk to people who are talking to me via AirPods and it's annoying. So to pay the extra money for my sanity and for theirs, um, I think it was uh, uh, it was worth the extra money to do that. Um, so that's pretty much it on my end. Uh, I hope that I gave you some insight into uh, these devices. I wasn't really trying to do a compare and contrast per se. I wanted to make it really all about the AirPods Pro since they just came out. But considering I've purchased, well, a friend of mine bought me these and then um, I bought these for myself. Uh, you know, considering I have these, I'm not in being endorsed by anyone. I don't have to send these back. I use my own money to buy these. Uh, you know, I might as well just kind of put everything in front of you so you can kind of make an educated decision if you haven't done so yet. So that's it for me. You're a senior advisor. Tune in. Um, I'm promise you the next videos are going to probably be more tech support because that's my area of expertise. So, um, how to navigate through two-factor authentication. Um, a lot. I got a lot of calls about iCloud storage versus iPhone storage and some confusion with that. So there's a lot of nuances that I'm gonna share with you all um, that will, again, prevent you or help you uh, from having to call into Apple and wait on hold, especially with the holidays coming up. Um, it's gonna be a nightmare. So I definitely wanna save you all that if you're running into any kind of problems with your devices. So that's it. Hope you liked the video. Um, if I helped in any kind of way, please like and subscribe. If I didn't help in any way, please like and subscribe. <laughs> um, but I appreciate you all. I'm grateful for my first video and I will talk to you soon. Bye now. Um.